I'm Swati Singhanya and if you are new to my channel, my channel is totally dedicated on making finance easy for entrepreneurs. I am unlocking financial literacy here and this video is a part of a series where we are telling you if you are planning to start your own business, how can you start your own business? Which form of entity should you register with? And if you have spent even a little amount of time on this topic, you would know that there are so many forms of entities that you, are, you can form if you are planning to start your own business. So now, should we start talking about one person company? Yes, let's do that. So as the name suggests, one person company is a company which can be formed by one person only. Historically speaking, if you are forming a company, minimum people that you need to start the company is at least two. So that is basically for the shareholders and director requirement. But over the years, the government realized, that especially with the startup culture becoming so strong, the government did realize that not always would you have a partner if you want to start a company, especially when you are growing up. Now let's take an example. You are starting your business and you don't know what stage or how long you will continue this business or how much will you be expanding the same. And so you want to keep it not so formal initially. How is a good way to do it? You can always start a sole proprietorship. And the details for sole proprietorship are given in this video. But now let's assume that you, you've realized that okay, this is a concept which works and I want to make it a little more formal and organized then what would you do? You would convert that business to either an LLP, a partnership firm or a company. Now, if you are someone who is single in that business, what format can you do? For a partnership firm, you need two people. For an LLP, you need two people. So for all these forms of businesses, you need at least two people. So if you are someone who is doing the business alone, then one person company is the best suggested model, especially when you have crossed the sole proprietorship level. What are the basic requirements? The basic requirements is that you only need one shareholder. So you will only be issuing one share for this company. And the minimum director that you need is one. You may have more than one director, but the minimum that you need is one. You may in fact go up to 15 directors as per the law. And this one shareholder that you need has to be a national person. So it cannot be another company that starts a one person company. It has to be an individual who will be starting a one person company. The third thing that you need is a nominee to the shareholder. So in case anything happens to the only shareholder that starts one person company, he has to appoint a nominee in the memorandum of formation of the company so that in case of any eventuality, the nominee could take up the shareholding and then decide whether he wants to continue with the one person company or close it down. Now, in addition to these requirements, what you more require are the basic things. For example, you should have an address to give as your registered office and you would need some documentation to prove that it is the registered office of the company. And these are the basic details that you would need to start a one person company. The process of starting a one-person company is the same as a normal private limited company. So for example, you would need to first of all find if the name is available or not. Then you would need to book the name and see if you would get the approval for the name. Then you need to apply and form the memorandum of association and articles of association of the company. You need to appoint the director of the company. You need to issue share certificates. So all the requirements that are there for the formation of a private limited company apply to a one person company also. And you can always hire an expert services to get these through. In fact, I would strongly recommend that you speak to your chartered accountant or company secretary or you can even contact us at the below link ID in case you've decided to start a one person company. But before you make that call, first hear the goods and the bads of one person company. And also our suggestion as to what are the situations when you should consider a one-person company. I personally really like the concept of one-person company, especially after the recent budget. Now, in the recent budget, the government has changed a little bit of requirement of one-person company. So before this budget was announced, a one-person company had to be compulsorily converted into a private limited company if your paid up capital crossed 50 lakh rupees or your turnover crossed 2 crore in the average of the last 3 years. So that basically meant that as soon as you grow a little, 
you have to convert it to a private limited company and that means first of all find who would be the other shareholder with you or who would be the other director with you in your company and that could be a real big challenge for the sole entrepreneurs and so i think it's a great news that the government announced in this budget that this particular requirement that as soon as you cross 50 lakhs or 2 crore has been vanished so even if your turnover now crosses 20 crores or 30 crores you don't need to compulsorily convert it to a private limited company what you can do is at any point of time after 2 years of your formation of one person company you can convert it to a private limited company whenever you choose to so this as for me is one of the most important benefits that one person company offers you are not bound by any compulsory conversion to a private limited company the second is if you are a sole entrepreneur it is very easy to start a one person company you don't need to back up on another person in fact you don't need to look for another person to become a co director with you in the company as soon as you form a one person company it would have its own pan card it would have its own different identification by the government a different company identification number so what really happens is that one person company becomes another legal entity distinct from your personal identity so your i pan number will not be same as the pan number of your one person company so that also means that your liabilities are different let's say if you have taken a home loan in your personal name the company does not necessarily need to pay for this however if you have a sole proprietorship firm at the end of the year the sole proprietorship and the income of the individual is combined and so the bank can always claim for the income of the sole proprietorship but in case of a one person company that would not be the case because the liabilities are different the assets are different and the profit and loss are also different so this is the second most important benefit of one person company the third benefit is that if you are running a sole proprietorship firm and as i just mentioned that in case you want to separate your legal identity how can you really graduate from a sole proprietorship the best way to do it is convert it to a one person company it is very easy to convert a sole proprietorship to a one person company and a word of caution here when you are converting your sole proprietorship to a one person company always remember to mention the identity of the sole proprietorship firm in the memorandum and articles of association of a one person company so what does that mean that when you are making the memorandum and articles of your one person company mention that this is getting converted from the sole proprietorship named this to a one person company named this this will help you maintain the continuity of the operations of the two organizations and so it also helps in converting the tax liabilities and the tax registrations though it is still to get very hassle free in our country but we are getting there but remember to maintain this in your memorandum and articles of association so just to summarize this point for you if you are running a sole proprietorship firm it is very easy to convert the sole proprietorship to a one person company now if you are running a one person company how will you graduate further so let's assume that you want to grow bigger and you want to cover some of the limitations that i am going to talk about you can convert the one person company to a private limited company and then to a public limited company in fact if you have converted your one person company to a private limited company and after few years you think the private limited company is not really serving the purpose you can even convert it back to a one person company but remember to maintain all the regulations and laws that the government requires you to so another benefit of a one person company is that it doesn't follows the concept of perpetual succession because here there is only one shareholder who has nominated one of the nominees so in case of a death or permanent handicap of the only shareholder the nominee gets the option to either continue and become the shareholder of the company or even reject that option now in this case in case he rejects the option it will not automatically continue right the company has to close down however in case of other private limited companies it's a perpetual succession so automatically the shares of the company transfers to the nominee and the nominee will not have the right of saying yes or no 
In fact, there are many shareholders. So most of the time, the death of one of the shareholders doesn't create too much issue for the functioning of the company. Now let's come to the benefits of various formalities that are lesser for one person company. So a lot of formalities are there as per the Companies Act, which the private limited companies have to follow. So for example, the annual returns have to be signed by a chartered accountant, company secretary and the director. And yeah, we've also done a video on small companies where the smaller private limited companies are given a host of benefits where they have to follow much lesser formalities. Now, a lot of those formalities which are made lenient for small companies also apply to one person company. So here also, you don't need to necessarily get your company secretary to sign your annual reports. In fact, the requirement of the annual general meeting is not compulsory for a one person company because hey, there's only one shareholder. So for an annual general meeting, he's going to be the only person in the room. Similarly, your financial statements of one person company don't need to necessarily have a cash flow statement and the list can go on. So what? So basically, the Companies Act has made it very lenient for one person companies to function. So what it is saying is that since you are the only shareholder and maybe the only director in the company, let's make it easy for you. So the government is making it more easier and comfortable for sole entrepreneurs to get and form a, a company, a private limited company and continue operations. So one person company is technically a private limited company, but on a much smaller level. And let's call it in the initial years. So let me summarize all these strong advantages that a one person company enjoys. The first and the most important is only one shareholder is needed. Only one minimum director is needed. In fact, you can go up to 15 directors, but only one is needed. The third, the list of formalities that you need to follow for your compliances has is reduced to a large extent for a one person company. It is very easy to form a one person company or convert a sole proprietorship to a one person company and then a one person company to a private limited company or then convert it back to a one person company. So the conversion also is very easy and also the operations of this company is very easy to handle because your formalities are lesser, it's easier to form it, it's easier to maintain it. So these are the strong advantages of one person company. Now, before you start jumping with excitement, let me tell you the negatives or the limitations of one person company. So here are the list of limitations when it comes to one person company. So one person can only form one OPC, which is one person company, shortly called one OPC. So you can only be involved as a shareholder or director or in fact nominee in one OPC. You cannot be a nominee in various OPCs. On the other hand, you can be a shareholder in various private limited companies. You can even be director in a lot of private limited companies. There's no limitation in becoming the shareholder of a private limited company. But for OPC, there is a limit. Second, no minor can become either a nominee or a shareholder or a director of a one person company. Because it's a sole premier, you have to be a non minor. You have to cross the age of 18 to form a one person company. The third negative is, and I think it's very relevant in today's time, is that you cannot raise capital from outside when it comes to one person company because you cannot issue shares, right? There's only one shareholder and there's only one share which is issued. So you cannot issue more shares and that basically means if your company has crossed a particular level where you are considering of raising funds as equity, you can always raise funds as debt in OPC but if you plan to raise funds as, an, as equity, and we have explained what is the difference between equity and debt in this video, then you have to convert your one person company to a private limited company because it is only in that case that you can issue shares to people other than yourself. The next limitation is that you can convert your OPC to a private limited company only after two years of formation. So it cannot be that you formed your OPC in March 2021 and in April 2021, you want to convert it to an OPC. Earlier, the slabs of 50 lakhs and 2 crores used to apply. But because the slab has now been removed, you can only convert your OPC to a private limited company after two years of operation. 
The next is, is a limitation and an advantage too. So in a company, the rule of perpetual succession applies. So in case anything happens to the director, one of the directors of the company, the other directors continue the board or they continue to make the decisions for the company till the time the chair for the director is filled. So the company continues to operate. There is no hamper on the operations of the company. But when it comes to OPC, in case anything happens to the director, the nominee of the director is given the option of either continuing or not continuing. In case he chooses to continue, well, everything is good and the operations would continue. But in case the nominee says, no, I'm not interested in becoming the director of the company or continuing the operations of the company, then the company has to be dissolved. So this is a positive and negative both. Negative because it is a limitation and positive things cannot be taken for granted. And so in case you are thinking of forming a one person company, please ensure you've had the discussion with your nominee that in case anything happens to me, you would continue the operations of the company. In fact, you can even change the nominee while you are alive. Okay guys, since now we have given you a list of all the advantages that one OPC has and all the limitations that OPC has, let's talk about the situation as to based on me, who should actually start a one person company. The first situation is that if you run a sole proprietorship firm and if your operations have stabilized or have survived for one or two years, you should strongly consider forming an OPC because this is where the legal identity of your business differentiates itself from you. And that is the first thing a business should have in mind, long-term vision. Second, if you are planning to buy any assets, it could be tangible or intangible, or it could be land, property, office, or it could also be registering for royalties and registering for patents. These are basically assets which will create revenue for you down the line. In case you are thinking of buying or registering any asset in your firm or in your name, please ensure you make an OBC, one person company, and then register in that. Because tomorrow in case you want to raise capital for that, or if you want to take loan against that, it is far more easier to take both the routes in an OPC as compared to your individual name or a sole proprietorship firm. Because for bank, there are a lot of requirements and even when people start investing in your company, they would want to have a formal structure of your organization and OPC is a strong step in that. Third, obviously if you are a sole planner, you don't have to take the pressure of finding a partner that I do need a partner so that I, he can become another director. You don't have to share your power with anyone. And obviously you don't get to share your responsibility with anyone also. So if you are a sole premier, one person company, OPC, is a super great option, especially after this budget because now you don't have to compulsorily convert it to a private limited company. It is a choice. It is your option whether you want to take it or you don't want to take it. Now, sole prania will also include people who are providing services. So people who are in practice, let's say chartered accountants, company secretary, engineers who run their consultancy companies, it is easier for you to form an OPC and register it than run a sole proprietorship firm because again, it is a better structure for you. So I do strongly feel that in such situations, you should form an OPC and make your organization formal because only once you make your organization formal, you would become extremely serious about it. And even people around you will start taking you seriously because the word private limited after your company's name does change a lot of things. And I've seen banks change opinions. I've seen banks change interest rates because there is a private limited word attached to it. And also since the formalities are lesser right now, it's a great deal to get into a one person company. So I hope this video helped. And if this makes sense for you, do not forget to like and subscribe our channel and also share this video with your friends and your startup group because all I want is to help people and for them to make an informed decision as to which form of legal entity they should start with. And yes, we are bringing videos 
on the other forms of entities super soon. So keep watching and keep liking and keep sending us love and affection. Thank you so much, guys.